Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm John F. Gately. You can call me Jack, and I'm broadcasting today from beautiful Plymouth here at Plymouth Beach. I don't know if you can see that in the background, but beautiful. It's kind of stormy today. Hey, you know, I think there's this uh, significant anxiety in society. I don't know if anxiety in society, did I just say it? Um, I don't think people really elucidate this, but it, it's something that definitely concerns people um, in a regular basis. And that's kind of like the synergy between big government and big tech and surveillance and the ability for both of those parties to come together or even separately kind of track everything that's going on in, in your life. This, you know, most recent thing that we talked about, um, got a lot of press about, and I did a story on in this channel a while back, is the whole IRS bank account. They want to track every penny out of your bank account if you have a bank account over $600. Uh, apparently that has now been defeated, at least for now. But I think that people gets people, you know, worried about, like, the government is tracking everything you do. Uh, do you get the email that that I get? I get it once a month from Google, and they know exactly where I've been. That's creepy, right? It's kind of cool every once in a while if you go on a trip, but other than that, it it's it's creepy. And I think with the virus, we've seen vaccine passports kind of put the geofencing, healthcare tracking, like all together and that's that's like triple creepy if you think about it you know um the other day al gore came out and said we're going to be able to track all the vehicles the ships the trucks throughout the whole world and figure out their carbon footprint and i was like wow that that that's that's amazing it's amazing but it's also kind of scary um 30 years ago they came out with this concept or 20 25 years ago that they'll be able to track your whereabouts or your use on highways by taking pictures and we're going to get rid of all the toll booths and people said oh come on that'll never happen there's not the technology the computer and now it's every day you drive down the mass pike or any other major toll road, and they're tracking you by taking pictures of your license plate. It's commonplace now. And then they auto-debit it from your bank account, assuming you have a transponder, which I don't. But I'm sure they'll be very soon, it won't be long, that transponders will be built into your vehicle. You know, that's not too far away. You know, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when eight tracks were something that you screwed in underneath your dashboard, and then, of course, eight tracks became commonplace. They were built into the car, from from the factory and then of course they went to cassettes and you know you know the story but but with that also i i think you've heard the proposals almost always from democrats to start tracking your mileage and taxing you on how many miles you drive i was uh, i'm always totally opposed to that you know i figured we already pay for the gas tax to do that right so um, these are very scary things. You hear about the social credit score in China. Put that together with the vaccine passport. What's really the difference between those two things? The other night, last night, actually, here comes the rain. Um, Tucker Carlson was talking with the policeman in Virginia who anonymously donated to Kyle Rittenhouse's 25 bucks. A big box, big $25 donation, anonymously donated to his defense fund. And of course, Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, he's on trial, but in America, people are innocent until proven guilty. And the police officers in Virginia, and the cases in Wisconsin, so there's no like inherent conflict of interest, you know. But he got hacked, or the website that he donated to got hacked. And I think, I think, you can check, fact check me on this, I think purposefully, and basically he got doxxed and lost his job. He was a policeman there for 19 years and no pension, and of course now he's filed a grievance and probably a lawsuit to come. Uh, in the United Kingdom, they're contemplating a law that will uh, become a crime if you say something harmful on social media. It might be legal, 
to say it, but it could be harmful. And the government gets to decide what harmful is. Now, this is going to be a totally kind of left field analogy or right field, whatever you want to call it. But I remember this story about Joni Mitchell, you know, the famous folk singer, right? And I don't know who it was, uh, Bob Dylan or um, that guy from uh, Crosby, uh, David Crosby. Somebody said to her, you put too much into your songs. You don't leave anything for yourself. And when you do that, when you put everything out there, there's nothing... You, you share your entire identity with everybody. I've heard Casey Neistat talk about this as well. You share your entire identity with everybody. Then what do you have of yourself? And that's actually the theme of Orwell's 1984. When the government knows everything about you, you lose your own self-identity, your own, your own ego. You, you, you lose yourself. If you haven't read the book, I'm strongly recommending it. And I think that's what people are somewhat, you know, have some tr intrepidation about anxiety. You know, as I said, the toll booth thing. You know, 25, 30 years ago, that was pie in the sky. Well, what's our society going to be looking like 25, 30 years from now? When we're talking about these things, vaccine passports, social credit card, and tracking you, geofencing you, it, it's now it's kind of seems like a stretch, right? It's a stretch to achieve these things. 25, 30 years from now, what type of country, what type of society are we going to have? Well, that, I guess, will be all up to us. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm John F. Gately. You can call me Jack. Live from Plymouth Beach in Plymouth, Massachusetts, behind enemy lines. Have a great day.